Hello friends and welcome to the mystery reading. It is such a pleasure to have you here. I want to start by saying thank you so much for all the love that you guys showed me in the last mystery reading. It got over 200,000 views and I'm, I'm still in shock with uh, the response. So thank you. The mystery readings will find you whenever you need to hear them. They are timeless. There is no time around this reading. Definitely you will find a message in this reading that will light up something in you. Could ring a bell, could make you feel a certain way, could trigger something. I just want you to know that again, whenever you find this message, it was supposed to find you, okay? So as always, I'm gonna start by picking the general energy of this reading. This is a card that will support you in the present moment. Let's see what wants to come out today. Oh, okay. Look who showed up first, the magician. So listen. This is so beautiful that this card showed up first. Number one is, of course, a beginning. The seed has been planted. Now it's time for it to grow. It's starting to expand. It's starting, starting to take form. So with the magician, you've been doing the work. The universe has been noticing how much effort, time, energy you've been putting into something you're passionate about. Anytime you see the infinity loop in the tarot, which it only comes in three card in the traditional version, there's an important message here. Letting the energy flow. Giving love, time, energy again, and not waiting for anything in return. But this is going to be coming up naturally for you. This is as above, so below. As within, so as without. So when I see the magician, um, my interpretation change always uh, because this is such a powerful card. Right now, to me, it feels like the work you've been doing and how much you've been changing inside will be shining through on the outside. This is how I feel about the magician in the present moment. But interpretation again it changes always always there are no right or wrong in the tarot and we have the hierophant okay this is going to be a really powerful one so with the hierophant this is the first card in the tarot where you see more than one person there are other people here this is about the impact of your words. This is about your influence as a creator, as a person, as just a human being. You impact people always, constantly, even the people who act like they don't see you, who act like they don't know you. You impact everyone around you. Definitely there's something important about that. So listen, this is such a powerful combo. I'm not surprised. The mystery readings have been really freaking intense. Look at who is on the bottom of the deck right now. The fool, the soul. So the, the tarot is the story of the fool. You are on an important soul journey. Chances are you clicked on that video and... You are open to the mystery. You are open to the unknown, which is what the fool is all about. Jumping into the unknown, accepting that life is a spiral, you know, that sometimes we say yes to something. We say yes to ourselves and we don't know what's going to happen. We never know. So we're always taking risk, always taking chances. Um, and with the magician and the hierophant, you're definitely taking a chance on something. You're giving yourself the chance to learn, giving yourself the chance to mess up, to get back up again after falling down, and also giving yourself the chance to get uncomfortable because the Hierophant is not a comfortable energy. Any five in the tarot is a contraction. So 
the willingness to get uncomfortable, to learn about yourself, to be a better person, to accomplish things, you know, being open again to the mystery. When we talk about mystery, this is it. This is the perfect combo here. Mystery is at the heart of creativity. So there's definitely something really important about that. You're about to quote unquote give birth to a new idea, a new project, and it will be flourishing. It could be expanding really slowly, but in the process of this expansion, you're going to be learning so much about yourself. You're going to be accomplishing many small goals and they all matter. This is what I'm feeling intuitively. Okay, um, so let's go. Let's see what this reading wants to say. What wants to come through? Oh, okay. <laughs> this is going to be a really good one. So we have the Knight of Pentacles. Right away, um, this is connecting to what I just said. Yes, things could be e moving slow, evolving in a really slow way. How can you learn to get more comfortable with that? How can you learn to be more patient with yourself? It's not just being patient with the universe and with others, but also with yourself. Letting yourself make mistakes on the way of achieving success, on the way of reaching your goals being nicer to yourself and definitely treating your body, your mind, your soul in a way that you would treat someone that you love. Okay. So nurturing the vessel, your body is your vessel. How can you nurture it and make sure that it's a comfortable place to be? And that's going to look different for everyone. It's not about perfection. It's not about obsessive behavior. It's about finding balance. And balance is not all good. It's, again, letting ourselves mess up. Being aware of that. Being aware of when we make mistakes. When we're, quote unquote, letting ourselves down. And acknowledging it. You know, so there's a lot of beauty in moving slow and checking in with herself, giving herself the time to go through the spiral, go through the waves of change. We have the emperor and the star card also. So already we have four major cards that came through and we're just starting the reading. There's definitely something magical about the mystery readings are my favorite readings to do. So with the Emperor, we're talking about Aries, which is the first sign of the Zodiac. So to me, it's highly connected with the Magician, the Aces. There is a new fiery beginning about to start. It has been moving really slow. There could have been times where you were so close to give up. There could have been times where you gave up for a while. But at the end of the day, you never gave up on yourself and there's something really powerful about that knowing that you are powerful knowing that um the end goal it might not be the primary focus it's the way to get there the road to get there that is really important and there should be more more focus on that this is what's coming up for me right now so with the emperor standing in your power, entering this new journey with your head up, with your heart open, and with so much passion. Whatever happens, no one can take your passion away from you, okay? Um, the emperor to me and any four in the tarot, the emperor is number four, any four in the tarot is about being able to give ourselves the care that we need to be on point and help others, serve our community, serve our clients, uh, be a friend, a partner in a way that is helpful for everyone. So I said it before, but any four in the tarot is like when you ride a plane, 
And in the beginning, um, for the security measure, they tell you to put the oxygen mask on yourself if anything happens. Put the oxygen mask on yourself first and then help another person. This is what the four energy is all about. Have you been nurturing yourself, caring for yourself, giving yourself that oxygen, you know, that care, that love, that energy, that time, so you are able to serve your community in a good way? Your community, your friends, the people who need you, the people around you. I definitely feel like I could be talking to people who are creatives, people who either have a business, are hopeful of creating a business in the future, um, have a specific talent. You definitely have something that belongs just to you that is really special. And I feel like you are about to share that with the world. It could be anything. And with the star card, this is it. This is you that kept your hope up. And it takes so much courage to be hopeful. It takes so much courage to dream big and let yourself dream big. And the star card is a lot about that. Of course, it's the deepest healing card in the tarot. So this to me talks a lot about you creating something, your creativity, your talent, your passion is such a big part of your healing journey. It's such a big part of who you are becoming. And on the road to get there, again, you're letting yourself dream big. And if not, if it's uncomfortable for you to have high hopes about something, if it's scary, well, the star card is here to remind you that it's totally okay. And also, again, remember, it takes a lot of courage to dream big. It takes a lot of freaking courage. So I like that. Seeing the star card, I absolutely know that there were a tower moment before, okay? So tower moments are things that are kind of unpredictable, unexpected, happening in the road to get to this uh, success, this uh, end goal. So on the road to get there, there's going to be many tower moments. There's going to be moments where we're like, okay, uh, I I'm giving up. This is too much. This is too painful. Um with the star card, this is the confirmation that you made it through. You're here today where you should be in this journey. It's far from over, but where you are is good enough. So how can you, again, be nicer to yourself? Telling yourself, okay, Sometimes I feel like I should be so much further in my journey at the age I'm at um, with everything that happened to me. I should be further. You're exactly where you should be. So let that sink in, okay? It's really important. When you see the star card, it feels like it's just a little... It's like a hug from the universe, as cheesy as it sounds. The universe is like, hey, you're exactly where you should be. You shouldn't be further. You are here right now for a reason. And you did the best you could. We have the judgment and the three of cups. This is really freaking powerful. Okay, another major card. So first of all, the three of cups. This has become... Probably my favorite energy in the tarot. Number three is so important. And it's highly connected to our guides, spirit guides, angels, ancestors, anyone or anything that is protecting you and guiding you where you're supposed to go. So to me, this card is highly connected to the angel number 333, which is such a powerful number. I definitely feel like you could have been noticing specific signs. You know, it could be in nature, you know, animals, uh, bugs. It could also be repetitive numbers. 
it feels like you are protected and you're definitely starting to see that clearly. So if you've been trying to connect with your guides, connect with your ancestors, maybe someone that passed away that you missed dearly, you are protected. The Three of Cups always come up around that. It's about the family that you have, the protection that is not necessarily here in the real world. The things that you don't see that are at work for you, for your greater good. And we have the Judgment card, which came up as center energy, which is super important for me in my reading. So in the Judgment card, Yes, this card is about being at crossroad. It could be about making an empowered decision, changing direction, but it's as simple as learning to not judge yourself so much. Again, when it comes to where you are right now. So this card is coming up because there's an important message here for a lot of you. Have you been feeling like where you are is not good enough? Have you been feeling like it's almost impossible that you achieve this goal that you have? It's totally fine to have these feelings come up. And it's totally fine to want to change direction. But throughout this process, you need to learn to judge yourself a little bit less. And also not judging other people. And protecting yourself from other people's judgment. How someone else feels about you, it's none of your business. It doesn't belong to you. It belongs to that person. Their opinion of you, it doesn't belong to you. So how can you let go of that? Let go of the fear of judgment. Uh, let go of other people's expectations of you also. It doesn't belong to you. And I know that Probably all of you already know that, but it's always a good reminder. When I see the judgment card, the word judgment, it just really stick with me. It's like, okay, how am I judging myself right now? How am I being impacted by other people's judgment? How can I protect myself in better ways? So listening to yourself, listening to the signs that are coming up from your guides also is really important. Is there a repetitive number that keeps coming up for you? Do your research. Or intuitively let the feelings come up about what the, those signs mean for you. Is there an animal, a bug that you keep seeing all the time? This is something that is always part of my practice. So, for example, yesterday I was doing my walk and I saw um, a beaver, <laughs> a beaver that was swimming in a little pond. And I was like, wow, this is so special to see that. So I did my research after and I learned so much about what beaver meant as a spirit animal. You know, it's about the mind, body, soul. It's about teamwork. It's about letting others help you. There were so many things that I learned yesterday because I did my research. So I feel like it's important to notice the beauty around you. Notice the signs, definitely. And if you don't hear anything, if you don't see anything, there's also a message in that. Tell me more. Okay, we have the Queen of Pentacles and the Magician that came up again. So this is a double confirmation with the Magician here two times. There's something new that is about to start in your life. You've been planting the seeds. So it's definitely something that you've been trying to manifest, something that you've been working on. Uh, could be for a short period of time, could be a really long period of time. Again, there is always this slow energy attached to the magician in this reading. So it has been a long, hard road, a lot of ups and downs, a lot of tower moments, like I said. But you are still here. You are still standing up. 
your head up and pushing through fear, pushing through the obstacle. And with the Queen of Pentacles, this is the deepest self-care card in the tarot. This is... Oh, the Queen of Pentacles is like so many things. How, again, can you nurture yourself more? How can you be more in tune with nature? I just talked about animals. In the traditional version, there's a little rabbit on this card. Um, being in tune with the cycles of nature. There's this understanding with that card that just like nature, humans go through change in season, ups and downs. Um, we can't control nature, but we can learn to see the beauty in it. You know, um, I'm from Quebec. So, you know, winters are really freaking intense, stressful, a lot of snow. I live in the country now, so sometimes there's no electricity for a couple days. Um, it can be really scary and overwhelming, but there's always a way to find beauty in it. There's nothing more magical than seeing a landscape full of snow. Um, there's something about your perspective also that is really coming up, and that's why I'm telling the story. Um, changing your perspective about something and really letting your thoughts come up, good ones, negative ones, but not necessarily making them your truth. The mind and the nervous system, the ego, it does a lot of things. It wants to keep us safe and stuck in the same place. So it's it's okay to let the ego come up and all the feelings come up, but not necessarily making them your truth. Making sure that you have your own perspective on things and not letting other people opinion, again, judgment, impact you so much. Who are you? Who are you? When you ground yourself, when you root yourself, when you forget for a moment that you're this person's partner, this person's twin flame, this person's daughter, this person's co-worker. Who are you? And this is a lot of the Hierophant's work. It takes a lot of courage to speak our truth, be authentic with who you are and not letting other people influence us so much. There's definitely something about that here so I feel like this message can be important for someone. How others, external things, external um, energy, situation that are out of your control, how have they been impacting you? Impacting your mood, impacting your healing journey, your soul journey. Um, there's definitely something about that. Because I feel like within you, you have the power, you have the answers. But there's been a lot of external things trying to interfere when it comes to your healing journey, your soul-led journey. So there's something about that. There could be a lot of releasing happening in your life. Trying to figure out who are the people I want around me. There could also be a lot of shame when it comes to ending a relationship, ending a friendship, letting go of something that don't serve you. There could be a lot of stress and shame around that because you don't want to hurt anyone. You're scared to make the wrong decision. I definitely feel like if this is something you've been struggling with, you're going to be getting the answers. And look at that. The hermit fell out of the deck. The hermit is definitely about that. Letting the answers come to you. Slowly but surely, they will come to you. You will get more clarity about a situation that you've been stressful about. A situation that has been uncomfortable. Um, so the Hermit is, is so beautiful. The Hermit is a card of the present moment. We only know where our lantern is guiding us, which is the next step. 
So the future, it's over. It's not here anymore. Of course, it impacted you. It changed you. It could be a big part of your life. Um, but there's something here that is asking you to focus on the next step. What is the first step you can take today in this new journey? What is one thing that you could do today that will nourish your soul, nourish your brain, make you feel good, make you feel accomplished? Uh, when I see the hermit Virgo energy, which we are in Virgo season, I love to give myself really, really small goals. Something so small, so random, and feeling like I'm accomplishing something. Um, changing little habits and really noticing it and celebrating myself for accomplishing something, even if it's so small. I feel like when we are kids, we get celebrated for everything we do. Um, you know, you take a first step, you lose your toot. Nah, nah, nah. There's always something to be celebrated. Why aren't we doing that as adult? Why aren't we celebrating ourselves and the little accomplishment, um, you know, that we go through? There's something about that. And also, anytime I see the hermit, I want to make a list of some sort. Okay, this is my goal. Here are some things that I can do to help me get there, you know? And having a goal sometimes can be overwhelming. I'm not a fan of the word goal, but again, I feel like it's really important to dream. Let yourself dream of something. Let yourself fantasize about something. Let yourself be hopeful for something that you want to achieve in the future. So make a list. Definitely make a list. Anytime I see the hermit, I'm like, okay, I'm going to make a list. I'm going to write down everything that's been coming up for me internally and externalize it, write it down. This is always my first step in anything I do. I sit down and write. This is what I do with my terror work and my personal life um, with anything. I feel it's really important to externalize things. Um, and not, you know, you could do it on your cell phone, but there's something really powerful about writing something down. A lot of people don't do it anymore. And it is a spell on its own to sit down and write something on a piece of paper. It is kind of a manifestation, um, thing that you're doing. And we have the high priestess. So, Listen, a lot of major cards came up, and I'm not done with that reading. I'm going to be clarifying. But with the High Priestess, this is connected to the moon, of course. This is Pisces energy. We're talking about releasing, ending, um, being aware of how the past impacted us, and also everything I've been saying around nature. The moon is connected to the ocean, connected to nature, the cycles of the moon, cycles of nature. So there's definitely something about that. What season of your life are you in right now? Are you in a season where you feel like everything is dark, everything is overwhelming? That's also valid. Are you in a season of your life where you feel like you're so powerful, you can accomplish anything? Are you in a season where you have no freaking idea where you're going? There's also beauty in that. So wherever you are, it is totally fine. It is good enough. The high priestess, of course, is like connected to intuition, healing. Uh, this is such a powerful energy. And I'm not surprised that she's coming up after seeing the magician two times. This is definitely an important card. So this is the next step. You know, it, High Priestess is number two. After the realization, after checking in with yourself, centering yourself, um, manifesting, being clear with your intentions, something is happening. The wheel is turning. So you're going to be noticing some clear changes in the next couple days after watching this reading. There's definitely going to be something 
real that is coming up for you. A sign, a confirmation, something moving in your favor. Um, and I really like seeing that. Okay, let's see what the universe has for us. I want a clear message. Give me a clear message. We have the chariot. Okay, chariot, beautiful. So we are talking again about the moon, about getting vulnerable, getting real with our feelings. The chariot is so mysterious because it is not about the person here. It is not called the chariot or it's called the chariot. What is holding you? What are the things that make you feel secure? The things or the people that make you feel like it's possible to accomplish anything. There's something really mysterious about this energy, of course, because it's connected to the moon. And the chariot is made out of concrete in the original, in the traditional version. So you are graduating energetically. You're not necessarily moving in the way that you want to in the present moment, but energetically, there's a lot happening. You're learning a lot about yourself. You have better tools for whatever will be coming up your way. And you are able to make decisions from the heart. Make decisions out of what you really want and not necessarily, you know, decisions that are impacted by other people's opinion of you. This is such an important reading because it definitely speaks of that. I feel like all of us, our whole lives, we've been influenced and impacted sometimes in negative way because of how people speak to us, how they treat us, the things that they do that impact us. Sometimes, you know, our parents' decision, our partner's decision, how it impacts our lives, sometimes in a negative way. There's something here about breaking free from that. And it feels really impactful in a lot of our lives. So I, I like seeing that. Breaking free from this energetical prison, this mental prison that we created because of everything that happened to us. And sometimes, you know, when we are a little kid, we could have someone saying one thing to us and it will stay with us for the rest of our lives. It will impact, you know, our self-esteem, the way we do things forever. This is something that's proven, uh, you know, in psychology. The things that people say to us and do to us, it stays with us for a really long time. But this energy here is about someone who's releasing that. This is truly a quote unquote, I'm done giving a fuck <laughs> so much about other people's perception of me. It doesn't belong to me. And that's so liberating. And we have the sun. You want to talk about feeling liberated? This is you seeing the beauty in yourself, having a clear mind. The sun is all about clarity. It's also a lot about letting yourself experience the bad days. A bad day doesn't mean a bad life. A bad week doesn't mean a bad life. You know, even a bad year. In times where... It's so hard to see the beauty in something. You know, the really scary, stressful situation, traumatic situation that happened to us because we're a human being, you know. Um, suffering is, is just, you know, um, something that always will come up for every human being. Again, this, the spiral, the ups and downs, the, the changes, the season of life. In those traumatic times, how can you learn to hold space for the beautiful days that are going to be coming up? Because there's going to be some really beautiful things coming up that you have no idea even exists right now. So the sun is a lot about that. 
holding space for the possibility of achieving your goals, the possibility of experiencing things amazing that you never even thought were possible. How can you hold space in your heart for that? The sun is about the heart space. It's connected to Leo. So we're talking about the heart space. We're talking about passion, fire energy. We have the three of wands. You want to talk about fire and passion? The three of wands is like, do it. Take a leap. I never felt like the fool and the tarot was the leap. To me, the fool is the moment before the leap. But every traditional you know, uh, description of the fool is like taking a leap of faith. The three of wands to me is the leap of faith. You might not feel completely ready. You might feel like this is too scary. This is too overwhelming. You will learn as you go. With the three of wands, this is it. It's like, hey, you are protected. You are ready in ways that you don't even know. Take that leap. Say yes to yourself. Take a chance. It's okay to take a risk once in a while, you know? If we're not trying to hurt anyone, if we're not trying to hurt ourselves, take a risk and say yes to yourself. There's definitely something that's coming up. There's going to be an opportunity coming up. Um, like I said, in the days following you listening to that reading, we have five of swords in the reverse and five of pentacles in the reverse. So we have two fives in the reverse getting much more comfortable in your body, in your mind. Your mind is becoming a much nicer place to be. Your body is becoming a more comfortable place to be. And that's because you're learning to love yourself. You're slowly learning to love all parts of yourself. Even the ones that are almost impossible to love. And the goal is not to love everything and to be happy about everything but again holding space even for the things that are uncomfortable are scary are stressful um again this is all balance we're not trying to eliminate anything that's negative we're not trying to be perfect we're trying to balance everything give ourselves a freaking chance to become a better person, you know, to get more comfortable. And we have the King of Cups. So after doing all of this work, which this is work that you will be doing for the rest of your life, you know, we're never done evolving, we're never done healing, growing, expanding, learning, even if you are a teacher, you are still a student. Um, with the King of Cups, there's so much beauty. It's like you are on another level emotionally. You are able to help other people. You are able to serve your community, serve your clients, serve the people who need you emotionally, energetically, in a way that can really change their life. And I feel like if you are here today listening to that reading, what you have to offer will change other people's life. And again, you might not see that now. This is the mystery reading. There is so much mystery. Every day is mystery. And that's why I connect so much with that word. And that's why these readings are so important for me. Um, flowing with the mystery, embracing the mystery. It's just being open to whatever wants to come up, you know? And the King of Cups is a lot about that. You've been through the ups and downs. You could even feel like you've seen it all. And what you learn throughout the process of this journey, it will help other people also. This is how powerful you are. This is how complete you are. Um, so the King of Cups is um, really, really powerful. I'm not surprised that it's coming up last here. I'm going to pick some Oracle cards. 
Oh, okay. Give me another one. We have you are good enough Virgo energy. We are in Virgo season as I am recording this reading, but this is a timeless reading. I just want to say that Virgo season is really important when it comes to giving ourselves the credit for everything that we are, everything that we do, everything that we have to bring to the table, your power, your strength, um, your abilities, your passion, it is good enough. And again, it will be shining through. And we have emotions are running high. So I'm not surprised. I feel like Again, you could be in a weird time right now. You could be seeking answers. You could feel like you're overwhelmed, you're tired, or you could be in a high also. This is beautiful. I feel like, again, there's something about learning to balance, embracing all the feelings, the good, the bad, the ugly. Know that it's all part of you and not trying to change yourself so much. It's okay to change. It's okay to grow. It's okay to want to change. But you're also perfect the way you are in this present moment. And there's only room for improvement, of course. Um, but can you make space for that? There's definitely a message about that. A lot of you have been going through a lot. I know I am. I know everyone I do personal readings for also are going through a, a lot of intense change, overwhelming energy, um, a difficult season in their life, you're not alone. And I know that it's super cheesy to say that, but you're definitely not alone. And I hope that you found a message in this reading that serve you. You can always come back to the mystery reading. They'll always be there for you. Um, and again, take exquisite care of yourself. And thank you so much for your love and support.